Hi, my name is Jo Bowler, and I'm a professor of maths education at Stanford University. These are some of my students. Hi, I'm Brandon. Hi, I'm Elisa. Hi, I'm Monse. Hi, I'm Jody. And we're here to tell you some really important and exciting facts about maths learning. The first, and maybe the most important, is that everyone can learn maths to high levels. You may have heard that some people are math people and some are not, or that some people have a gift for math. But new brain research shows us there is no such thing as a math person. Everyone can learn math to any level they want. Let's look at the brain evidence. We now know that experiences grow your brain. It is up to you how much you learn as your brain grows and changes all the time. When you learn something, a synapse fires in your brain. It's like an electric current. And when you learn something deeply, going back to the ideas and thinking about it, the synapse forms a new pathway in your brain. Synapses fire in lots of situations, not just in class. Pathways grow in your brain when you play a game, read a book, draw, and visualize. Your brain is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the bigger it gets. In recent years, there have been stunning examples of what scientists call brain plasticity. Your brain isn't actually made of plastic, but it's so flexible, it's growing and changing all the time. A few years ago, a nine-year-old girl named Cameron had half her brain removed because she was having dangerous fits that doctors couldn't control. The doctors expected Cameron to be paralyzed for a long time, maybe forever, since she lost the part of her brain that controls physical movement. But she shocked doctors and scientists as within months, she was running around again. The doctors could only conclude that the missing side of her brain had, in effect, regrown. In another study, researchers found that a three-week program in which people work for 10 minutes a day on a task caused permanent brain pathways to form. Think about that. If the three-week program can do that, what do you think a year of math class can do to your brain? That brings us to our second idea. It's really important that you believe in yourself. We now know that your beliefs about your own abilities actually change the ways your brain works when you do math. Carol Dweck has shown that everyone has a mindset, a set of beliefs about their own learning and potential. People with a growth mindset believe anyone can learn and that they can grow their brains through hard work. People with a fixed mindset think that a person is either smart or not, and that smartness is unchangeable. Oh, a D minus. I am not a math person. I just can't do this. Ugh, oh, D minus. But that's okay. I'll learn from our mistakes and try harder next time. These graphs show students' maths achievement in 7th and 8th grade. The students with a fixed mindset, you can see, stay at the same level, but the students with a growth mindset are always doing better and better. This is because people who believe they can do something work in better ways. They are more persistent, they keep going when problems are hard, they don't stop when they make mistakes, they just keep going. It is really important that you know that you can achieve anything and that you believe in yourself. Something else we now know from brain research is that struggle and mistakes are really important. A research study found that when people made mistakes, their brains grew more than when they got work right. Surely they had to work through the problem and get it right in order for their brains to grow. Actually, no. The study found that there were two possible synapse firings. The first comes when you make a mistake, and the second one comes if and when you're aware you've made a mistake. But how can your brain grow if you don't know you've made a mistake? Well, the best knowledge we have on this is your brain grows when you make a mistake because it's the time that the brain is challenged and is struggling, and those are the best times for brain growth. It can feel hard as a math student to struggle and fail. We've, We've all, all had, had that, that experience. experience. But now you can feel good about the struggle because you know your brain is growing. The most successful people in life are not the ones born with better brains. They're the ones who keep going when things get hard. Michael Jordan is one of the world's greatest basketball players. This is what he has said about the importance of struggle and failure. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times, I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Our next message is that speed is not important in maths. You don't need to be fast to be good at maths. In fact, it may be better to be slow with maths. Some of the best mathematical thinkers in the world are really slow. 
Lauren Schwartz, a mathematician, wrote about feeling stupid in school because he was the slowest mathematical thinker. He went on to become a world-leading mathematician and he won the Fields Medal, the greatest prize in mathematics. This is a quote from his autobiography. I was and still am rather slow. I need time to seize things because I always need to understand them fully. Towards the end of the 11th grade, I secretly thought of myself as stupid. I worried about this for a long time. He goes on to say that he later realized something critical, that speed isn't important in math. What is important is to deeply understand mathematical ideas and connections. Whether you're fast or slow isn't really relevant. Steven Strogatz is another top mathematician at Cornell University. He talks about doing math problems in groups and being one of the last people to solve the problem. The reason many mathematicians are slow is that they think deeply about math. Steve talks about being excited for the first time about a math problem in high school. He then worked on the problem for six months and eventually solved it. It isn't important in maths to be fast. What is helpful in maths is to think visually and creatively. Maths isn't just about calculations. They may be the least interesting part. It's actually about patterns and space, seeing things differently and making connections. Maya Mirzakhani is one of the most amazing mathematicians of her time and she just won the Fields Medal. Her work is entirely visual and very creative. When she won the Fields Medal, other mathematicians talked excitedly about how she had made connections between areas of math that had never been made before. Even though Mariam is one of the world's leading mathematicians, her seventh grade teacher told her she couldn't do math. Fortunately for the world, she met others who believed in her, and she believed in herself, and she kept going. In school, many people get the wrong idea that faster students are better at maths. But we know that being fast doesn't mean that. Often the faster students have memorized more, but we know that better memorizers don't necessarily have more maths potential. No matter how math is presented in school, you should know that math is not about memorization and it is not about calculations. Math is a much broader subject, about ideas, visualization, connections. And don't think grades or test scores define who you are and what you can do. You can do anything. Many school students don't reach their potential in maths because they think others are better than them. Always know you can do whatever you want to do. Your brain is growing and changing all the time. We want to leave you with these messages. There is no such thing as smart people and not smart people. Anyone can work to high levels. When you believe in yourself, your brain works differently. Mistakes grow your brain. Struggle and challenge are really good for you. It is not important to be fast in math. It is important to think deeply and creatively. Math is a broad, creative, visual subject. If you'd like to learn more of these ideas, we have a website called Ucubed. Come and try some of our maths tasks that reflect real maths. We are starting a revolution about math and the brain. You can help us spread the revolution by showing your teachers and parents our website and telling them what you have learned. Come to the students section of Ucubed and tell us your experiences. And most importantly, we believe in you and we want you to keep believing in yourself. It's really important. Mm -hmm.